What's going on YouTube? This is Wraith Designs with another video on my modular interior exterior model set. Uh, now today I've actually created some windows to be used for the modular set as well as some doors. Uh, as you can see I have one already in the wall of the windowed modular piece. I also have another piece without this in it and I just kind of want to show you uh, how it fits. As you can see, it fits pretty well. Uh, another thing is I've also uh, edited the model so that it can actually be animated, or at least uh, variants of it can be created as well, with uh, the bottom window pane being able to open. I have one fully closed, one fully open, and halfway. Uh, now I'm also going to kind of show you the animation uh, of this window just to kind of give you an idea that it does in fact actually move. Um, let me get really close here. Alright, so I keyframed uh, to certain parts here uh, the closing and opening again, so I'm going to play that right now. So as you can see, it's fully movable. Uh, now what I had to do was detach the bottom window pane part from the rest of the model. Uh, to be able to do this. Um, sometimes when you do this though it will leave behind certain polygons attached to the model meaning like the bottom part of the pane, the side ones as well uh, but since I'm going to be UV light mapping this window uh, there will be certain polygons I gotta delete anyway uh, but for right now I just bridged this edge to the other side of this pane this white line here adjacent to the other line bridged it so it would seal the model with another polygon and basically it's now able to be moved uh, so in essence what I really just did to detach it was let's say that this was a full-on model okay this one's already detached as well but let's just go with it um, so this is the bottom pane okay so this used to be attached to the entire window and what I really did was I just went into the polygon selection, you know, and I'd select the window pane, both sides of it, you know, all these parts, pretty much, you know, highlighting them, making sure everything was selected. You want to double check and make sure that you have everything selected. Also, make sure you have select object. Um, clicked because sometimes if you have it moved you know select and move things like that they might move a little bit and you won't even notice it until later on uh, where you might have done some editing so basically I selected the entire model that I wanted detached and then I would simply go down to detach and that would actually create itself uh, as a separate piece of the model so all I'd have to do is name it like bottom window pane uh, animated so that's what I did to do that so if you let's say you use Revit or something and you took a model out of there or uh, AutoCAD or even SketchUp and you've created your own models that's one of the best ways to kinda get uh, an animated effect uh, especially if you have like a door that's in a door frame already uh, and you want to detach it from the frame and make it so that it can open and close. Now what I did for this uh, model right here to kind of animate it was that I, you know, it's already open so I'd select this right here and I would keyframe it and the best way to do that is you know, obviously start at zero have it in the open state and down here you would hit auto key and what that does is every time you move it it'll record that keyframe. Now you can move this down on that same keyframe and it will save it in the position it's in then move to the next one. So this goes to zero uh, to a hundred frames. So basically what I did is every 25th frame you know I'd move it down halfway, 50th frame close it, uh, 75th frame open it halfway, 100th open it fully again. So then that's how I'm getting the effect that it's opening and closing. As you can see it is indeed animated. 
So, I mean, you could do this for, like, cut sequences or things like that in your game engine. Um, I know that you can export the animation of said model as an FBX file. Uh, I'm not totally familiar on how to set that up yet in Unreal Engine. Uh, same as, like, character animations, things like that. I know if you make a character animation and you want to save different animations of an animated character, you can export them as FBX. Um, and it will work in an animation sequencer in the engine. So as long as you know what you're doing, you can blend them together, different animations from running, walking, standing, idle, and, you know, doing whatever animation you're trying to, to pull off. These keyframes down here are what allow you to do that. Now you can change it, uh, the amount of keyframes and things like that. Um, in another video, I'll probably get more into that as I learn more. But I just wanted to share with you guys uh, something pretty cool that I figured out today. So I got three different windows I'll be using, fully open, halfway open and closed, um, and then another modular window that will actually be animated depending on what I want to use it for. I also have doors. Right now they don't have any door knobs, uh, but I will be making some knobs for the door. I figured I'd start off with something simple. Uh, I also have another wall over here that has it already kind of fused in, so I'll have some wall pieces with the door that's already closed. I'm also going to be, like I said, I'll have wall pieces without the windows attached to it and without the doors attached to it, as I had before. Uh, but I'll also have some that are boarded up completely with just wood. Um, I kind of want to make an old, decrepit interior uh, to kind of show off some artistry and, you know, kind of a dingy, old, you know, run-down apartment. I also want to kind of show one that's in, const you know, under construction or things like that. So I'll be doing certain ones with the door. Some of them with boarded up across with planks. Some of them are just straight up boarded in one solid board. Uh, maybe I'll even put like police tape over some. I don't know. I, I'm the possibilities are endless. So I I gotta say I'm pretty pretty happy with my work that I've just created. Uh, I've done this in about two days. The modeling of the windows was not easy. I had to actually look at references online, uh, and it wasn't exact dimensions as I wanted it to be. So I just had to resize it. Uh, with this resize tool so it was actually you know like for instance I can resize this or whatever to whatever I want and again you want to make sure things are snapped so if for any reason you have to resize something uh, I would use that method but understand that you're also going to be stretching your textures if you uh, have already UV mapped it for texturing you just have to re UV map it and you should be okay uh, but I would advise just kind of design the model ahead of time to what your spef specifications are and you should be good to go. Uh, again, I've created some modular floor pieces and modular ceiling pieces that match the same exact size as the walls, uh, length and width because what I'm going to be doing I actually know it's 250 by 250 um, so as long as it just kind of matches this segment that's fine. Um, I'm making it like that because then I can attach the walls to the other side and the hallway is pretty big. I can make this smaller if I want to depending on what I actually am going to create. Uh, so one of these videos I'm going to show you a finished creation of uh, an apartment interior. Uh, I'd like to get some maybe fire extinguishers, uh, exit signs, uh, pipes in certain parts of the hallway, maybe some heaters or radiators, things like that to kind of make it look more realistic. Um, so I'll be working on this for a while. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I hope that you have learned something pretty cool today. And, you know, if you have a vision, you have something you want to create, go for it. Because I'll tell you what, I didn't know modeling like this uh, before a few months ago. I knew a little bit enough to create certain uh, assets. Uh, some of them I would download from online. Other ones I would edit uh, with the knowledge that I had but this would actually be one of the first modular sets I've ever created. Uh, so you are witnessing my work as it unfolds. So if you think you can't do it, you can. Just uh, go online, look for a tutorial series. Uh, that's what I do. I go on YouTube and I find uh, playlists. What I'll do is I'll put in you know, a search term like 3ds Max uh, tutorials, and then under filter I'll put playlist, and usually I'll find many, many videos uh, of a person who does tutorials that will actually go uh, step by step pretty in, de in depth so I've done this for Photoshop, uh, 3ds Max, Maya, Revit, 
mud box. Uh, I got a bunch of videos that I've gotten from Lynda.com, Digital Tutors. So I like to teach myself uh, at my own pace. I think that's a great thing to do. Uh, it's always good to go to school if you can afford it, but if you can't, there are ways to kind of learn this on your own. So uh, you're not limited. So anyway, thank you for watching my video. I will create some more about in-game uh, capabilities of these modular pieces, uh, you know, real life uh, applications as well as possible VR uh, games or designs or whatever I may come up with depending. Uh, I don't have an Oculus Rift or anything like that yet so it might be a long way down the road. Either way, uh, thanks for watching and I will see you guys later. Peace.